Climb to the top. You wouldn't believe it. So the, I've asked my freedom of information from the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, and they're asking for an extension to, to delay and defer. So I'm going to give them a call, and that'll be cool. Wait on. I'll just do this. Oh, why is his phone being all weird all the time? Okay, wait on. Cancel that. Okay, cancel that. Oh, what have I done? Just got changes. Okay. Um, unknown caller. Oh, hang on. My phone's doing weird things. 026271. Oh, well, it's 02. Oh, it's got all these numbers in there. Why? Okay, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to be there in a minute. 026271. 5849. There we go. This would be lovely. From no one. Doesn't say their name. Oh, this is the same music every government department has. Hello, Maya speaking. Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Who's this? Who's this? My name is Maya. Hi, Maya. How are you? I got an email from um, FOI 2022 slash 045. It's a freedom of information request from um, the Department of the Prime Minister in Cabinet under the Freedom of Information Act. Um, my name is Richard McLean. Are you aware of that case? Okay. Well, it says here on the email that um, the current due date for a decision on this request is 9th of March. Um, but lo and behold, you're not in a position to finalise the decision by that date. And, and it's kind of funny because this is the delay, defer, deny tactics the government uses to um, aid and abet my death and cause my vagrancy. So um, anyway, it goes on. The department is now undertaking further searches to ensure, ensure, <laughs> that came in with um, uh, Tony Abbott, didn't it? Or one of the liberal ones. That any documents covered by the scope of your request are identified. So, so you're asking me to agree to a 30-day extension. Now, are you under legal obligation to provide that information to me by 9th of March 22 if I don't agree? So I can help you with that. So under the Act, um, the initial processing date is 30 days, but the Act enables um, an agency to ask the applicant if they will agree to an extension. It's Section 15 AA. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, um, I see that 15 AA. It, the yeah. FOI Act. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, yeah keep going. It caps, it, it caps that additional extension um, that the applicant can agree to 30 days. Um, if the applicant doesn't agree to any further extension to allow processing, an agency can apply direct to the Information Commissioner's Office for an extension of time to process. Oh, how funny is it? Because I've actually already um, asked for my freedom of information from so many agencies, such as Comcare, the Australian Human Rights Commission, and because I'm systemically gaslighted, ostracised, and character assassinated, um, uh, the OAIC refuse to give me any. Isn't that funny? And you know what else? Um, the um, the police, years ago, this is going back years, I, I was involved in a fray because I saved someone from being beaten up. It was all on video. But um, I didn't know I'd been framed back then. So... Um, so VOCAT actually pinned it on me, even though there was police evidence. So no one gave this up for me. And for years and years and years, I've been set up to fail. And as an acutely sensitive person, I feel that um, in my soul when people hate on me, you know, I know that feeling. And, and people are hating on me now. And people hate me so much that they delayed, deferred and denied my um, valid complaint about a um, suicide attempt. Isn't, isn't that weird? And, um, and 
I guess I guess the the whole motive was to just delay and defer until he kills himself, and um, and without justice, you know, cause it's easier to um get me to kill myself and do myself away as an easily exploitable person with a disability, um, who's already tried it twice and successfully done it in a public hospital, and then the government covered that up. So you'll understand my hesitancy when I say to you, the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, that this is an official thing asking me to give you permission after the government has systemically oppressed and um, um, abused and neglected and set me up to fail again and again for making a valid complaint for which I was framed. And, um, oh, and, and I've actually got a public profile. Like, I've worked for 25 years helping other people. Isn't that weird? And um, so if I agree to that request for a 30-day extension of time, we ask that you confirm this in writing or via return email. So it has to be official, does it? Twenty second of February. I, 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 I'm actually because I've been so condoned and so absolutely bastardized by this government and plus my former partner who owes me a million dollars, um, oh, half a million dollars actually. I'm I'm actually a squatting infamous vagrant at the moment, so I won't have um telephone for much longer. But I'd just like to say, um, on section um. Declaration on the Rights of Disabled Persons. Section 10 says, I have the right to protection against exploitation, discrimination, and abuse. And the human rights bit says it's an intrinsic value, freedom of human right that everyone has, irrespective of what they do or what they are. And the Disability Discrimination Act uh, and actually, I've been I've been banned by the Australian Human Rights Centre. How funny is that? And they free kicked a million dollar case, over a million dollars actually, to the opposition. And I couldn't do anything about it. Why? Because it's cooked from the top. That's right. The Prime Minister and Cabinet. So I'm going to try and be kind to you guys because it's actually really. Uh, I mean, I don't know what you're trying to frame me with, but I have evidence of going to the police at least two dozen times and trying to report rape, murder, fraud, tax evasion, they won't listen to me because I'm um, in a position of power and information and I'm a strong, resilient person, apart from when I killed myself and then it was covered up by the ombudsman, um, that, um, that, that I think the government is setting me up to fail and I think this email is another example of the delay, defer, and deny tactic that all government agencies use to exploit me and oppose another um, law enshrined in this constitution, which is equal recognition before the law and access to justice. Now, if you were um, actually acting within that law, you wouldn't be um, um, asking me, because you have to act by laws, don't you? That's why you're asking me for that in writing um, by email on close of business today, right? So you have to act within the law, but um, I have I have so, I have so laws I too. Can, so, yeah, so can, if I can't actually see the email seeking an extension, but if you have um, trouble accessing um, emails, I can reply to. Oh no, no, no I, I've got it right here. I've got it right yeah, here. I can I can respond that you you, you don't wish to give an extension. I just think, look, can I just be really blunt? I think you know who I am. I think you know where I come from. I think we both know why we've been framed. And I think the, the Prime Minister even knows about this. I feel like I'm in the Truman Show, you know? I'm just a dude. I'm just a dude who made a complaint about um, an ethical issue and I've done a PhD and, and now I have a brain injury from a suicide and 11 months on, 11 whole months, I have um, lived on less than $80 a week after rent. And you know what? There's a, there's a convention that the government follows that says I must have some adequate standard of living and societal protection. Now, I can't go to the police. 
I can't be a whistleblower. I can't go to IBAC. I can't even go to the um, finance minister and I can't go to um, any ombudsman or regulator. I've been systemically oppressed from every agency in this government that has ever existed. So um, now I'm getting it from the Prime Minister's office. I'd like to say that there's equal recognition before the law and access to justice. And I'd like to say that this delayed defer, um, defer thing that's going on and, and the legal things that you have to abide by, like I have some rights too. And actually the law says I have the right to housing and support. I'm squatting. I want you to go and tell the Prime Minister that Rich McLean, a human rights awarded advocate of 25 years, was framed as an extortionist for making a complaint. And then I want you to say they set him up to fail for years. And this crime comes from a few angles. It's perverting the course of justice and it's contained in section 319 of the Crimes Act 1900, which states that a person who does any act or makes any omission intending in any way to pervert the course of justice is liable to imprisonment of 14 years. Now, if the Prime Minister does not intervene in my case and provide me with some um, human rights and some dignity and some happiness and some food and some access to medication and my human rights actually met and the, the Prime Minister having to um, obey these rules, I could put him in jail, is that right? Or, or, or is it so systemically cooked from the top that you are actually delaying and deferring, aiding and abetting my death till I have nothing? Because I've got a bit of a few, a few um, things about that. So the last time I was irrationally hospitalised, even though I've done the PhD that has um, um, looked at um, what labels are and what mental illness is, I now have a brain injury. Now, you wouldn't know that, but um, but I do, and I can't remember things. But um, uh, and, and it says what actions might con constitute, well, sorry, constitute perverting the course of justice. A person may be charged if a doctor is giving a false medical certificate to a patient or, or a witness giving a false statement. I could put the whole government in jail, I reckon. A person encouraging or bribing someone to plead guilty to an offence they did not commit. A suspect in an investigation asking someone to provide a false alibi. Now, I've got evidence at this website called killhim.info. Have you heard of killhim.info? No, I haven't. Well, killhim.info is my whistleblowing website. Seeing as I've failed at APRA, I've failed at ASIC, I've failed at IBAC, I can't go to the police, and I can't go to the Ombudsman, and I was systemically set up to fail again and again for so long and so many years framed by my own child sexual abuse case, which the magistrate threw out because I was nuclear um, character assassinated. Um, well, you know, uh, she said I was doomed to fail from the start. What is doomed about me? And it says here, what must be proven? To find a person guilty of perverting the course of justice, the prosecution must prove each of the following matters. That the accused acted or made an omission. And I want you to say, if the Prime Minister, and you're the, representing the Prime Minister, you're a government public officer, and you represent the, um, the officer of Prime Minister and Cabinet, and I damn well know that you know who I am. And I know that you're trying to kill me. And you can call me paranoid, but, um, you know, I don't kill myself for fun. The, the office of the chief psychiatrist told me I can't threaten to kill myself every time I don't get what, my, what I want. I'm going to have to, to, um, end the end of this call. Um, I will pass on to the case officer that you're not inclined to give an extension to the request to process your FOI. Um, and that, that is all I can do at this point. Well, you could probably do some more. You could, you could pass on my regards to the PM. Because I've had to reverse engineer this thing from the bottom. I have to, I have to, I have to hang up now. I've been listening to you for a while now. It's um, quite important because I might die if I don't get my needs met. And Rosemary Kay has supported this and it's current. And um, um, there's the act. There's this. Oh, she hung up. <laughs>
That's what you get for talking to the office and prime minister about holding him to account. Because I'm just a dude, right? I'm fucking trying to stand up for myself. Every bastard's bloody slayed me. She knows exactly who I fucking am. Motherfucker. <laughs> and I'm the happiest, most infamous vagrant there is. So if you could please help me, it looks like I'm going to have to hold the federal government to account myself from not having any food and being exploited, rejected, persecuted, systemically and heinously oppressed to, to such a degree. It's beyond compare. I, I, I don't know of any... I, I'm not making this. I'm, I don't do this for fun. Like, I've, be, I've been exploited. I, I've been... My human rights have been desecrated. I've been identified, victimised, vilified. And it's not only been just a one-off thing. It's an actual conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. And it is a human rights violation and a vile, vile thing to do to one singular person who advocated for the best part of 20, 25 years to, to stop the suffering of other people by sharing his story. And by, by doing that, I made myself vulnerable to attack. And I'm either, I've got a PhD, I'm a doctor, but I'm, you know, people love to cut down the tall poppy. He's a smart bastard, we'll get him. And I'd like to say that that's, I, I, depending on who's got the money or the compliments or the abuse, I'm either too clever, too dumb, too mad, or not mad enough. But I say, yeah, you know, I gotta have a drink. Well, there's half a mercury there. <coughs> I reckon I'm a bit of a <coughs> Brazilian bastard, and I feel extremely saddened by this whole thing. It, 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 I'm still trying to reverse engineer it and work it out. It, I mean, I've had regretful sex. I've hadn't done anything illegal. I've been unsure of sexuality. I've been easily exploitable. I've done drugs. I've done, um, I've, um, uh, I mean, the more vulnerable I made myself, um, the more I thought I was helping people, and when I needed the help, no one would help me. So, um, I'm asking you out there, I was going to do a rant today, but, um, there are national standards, like, to do with disability service providers. I mean... I'm owed millions of dollars. Look, if you support me taking the government to account, um, I shall reward you in incredible ways because you know what? I haven't done anything wrong. I'm not insane. I'm forgetful now. It's not... I haven't done anything illegal. Like, I'm free. I am a persecuted, victimised, heinously shamed, maimed, blamed and literally set up to fail again and again um, and and died. I, I don't do it for fun. I didn't do it for an intense response. I did it because I lost hope in humanity. And then after I lost hope in humanity and killed myself, where I lost all my blood, was found accidentally and would have avo avoided certain death to suffer a brain injury in the hippocampus. I haven't even seen one psychologist in, well, since um, February in 2021. And since that time, I have been further ostracized, rejected. I actually got banned from this from the service. They, they sent me to a psych... They said I needed follow-up help you know I, I can't believe this there's a duty of care you know i, I I'm, I'm an ethicist i don't even want money but th this is the obstacle this is my path i know friends disagree with me i know they think i should get on with life but you literally can't when you're opposed by a vertigo vertigo inducing wall of oppression that intervenes personally in your life to your N NDIA helpers and turns them against you. I have never raped anyone. I'm not a pedophile. I haven't fucked a dog. I, 
you know, I haven't screwed a quail on the front steps of Flinders Street Station under the Lilydale clocks. I don't know. Anyway, there's someone outside here yelling at the moment, and I get very paranoid. I'm rationally paranoid. I'm talking to the Prime Minister. I can't believe this is happening. Are they waiting for something? Are they waiting for something to happen? The national standards that apply to disability service are rights, participation, individual outcomes, service agreements, and, and the Disability Discrimination Commissioner, um, Dr. Ben Gordon, and I think I've tried just about everything. Now I'm at the Prime Minister. I've got no food. I've got a sore tooth. I'm here in pain. Um, I haven't got a cent. Um, this is a this very personal battle for years has just become public at the helm of the Prime Minister's office. And I would like you to invest in the website um, and invest. I don't want money. I just want to be free from persecution. It's not. It's not bad. Not not a bad thing. I get death threats at the window. I can't go to police. Failed whistleblower. I would like um, the people who have remembered me from the past, as not as the angry rich and. I think I'm being very resolved, having gone through um, reverse engineered this thing from the bottom up. There are forces in this country that are protecting people in positions of money, power and privilege and reputation. And they are in danger because I have knowledge and I have power and I am free and I have sentience. I might be a bit forgetful or a bit mad or too mad enough, not mad enough. I don't know. I don't know. Can someone please help me? Um, uh, yeah, in, um, that's, oh, that's what I was going to say. In, um, I've, I've been on a DS, oh, first they put me on, oh, I was sick anyway, oh, from the conspiracy. And they, um, oh, just, you'll see it all on killing.info. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Can you believe it? I don't know. Can you believe it, Crystal? Crystal, can you believe it? She can't believe it. Can you please help me at killing.info? I just need some freedom from oppression, some safety, medication and healthcare. Please. Um, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm worth bloody multi-millions. I mean, um, I don't want the money. Please just help support me, and when I get justice, I'll give it back to you. Thank you.